Travis Carroll, student athletes, Kip Buechers, and Mark Schallenberger. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach, and then go to questions first for our student athletes. Coach. Yeah, what an, what an environment and atmosphere. Um, you know, we knew that they were going to come out with a lot of energy, and, you know, early on, they had some people on base when they hit their home runs, and we did not when we hit ours. And you just really got to tip your cap and credit them. Um, obviously, the situation that they're in, they knew their offense was going to have to go and get some runs for their for their arms because uh, of where they're at to kind of reset, so to speak, go to tomorrow. And, and you really got to credit them. They did an unbelievable job. Um, and we fought. We were in it, you know, down to the winning time or whatnot, and it got away from us. But just um, we put ourselves in this position. Um, going into today, we've earned it by winning the first two games of this tournament. Um, and if you want to look at some perspective and take a step back, um, I think we, we would take this last Wednesday going into Monday with a couple fresh arms. So just uh, proud of our effort from an a overall standpoint the last three days uh, to go and try to do something special tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, this is sometimes baseball, you know, sometimes you hit your homers with guys on base, sometimes you don't. And, uh, you know, I thought we did a good job living our plan. You know, we had a lot of base runners, a lot of a lot of free passes for us. You know, I think we, you know, we worked the counts and we did what we needed to do, just wasn't enough. And, uh, Mark, what, what made their pitchers so effective tonight, especially early on? Yeah, I think um, landing multiple pitches, just making you have to be cognizant of multiple pitches in any count. I mean, that's something we know about ECU, is they like to mix, and they're good at it. So it works for the most part today. Um, we know what our plan is. It's stick to the pitch we want to hit, kind of try to box them in. So we're going to try to do the same thing we did try to do today, tomorrow. And uh, Wes, well, what is the message for the team going into tomorrow? Uh, perspective. I mean, we're still playing with house money. Um, if you look at it, when we got on the flight to come down uh, to experience this atmosphere, um, and we played well the first two days, and, and with where we're at, we would take this, guys, absolutely 100%. We would take this opportunity uh, on a Monday um, to do something our program's never done before, and that's win a regional. So uh, it's going to be a fun ride tomorrow. Uh, we're going to celebrate it. We're going to be loose, um, and we're going to have a lot of fun and, and play, play extremely hard tomorrow. And what does it yeah, I mean, you have, um, you know, fresh Nick Smith, fresh Max Hansman, uh, Jacob Meyer for the most part, um, you know, and a Crescent that can come in in a situation. So, um, you know, these types of days, our, our offense is going to need to provide provide some runs, no doubt. But I really, really like some of the bullets that we have. And, and um, you know, whoever we get the ball to, I know they're going to give us a great effort. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right, Kip and Mark, thank you. Won't you guys go get some rest? Any other questions for Coach? Hearing none, thank you, Coach. Right. That will be in Luke Noah. We'll start first with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions for our student athletes. Oh, man, uh, proud of our guys. Obviously, uh, navigating a doubleheader today, not easy. Uh, we got to the final championship game the hard way. You guys showed a lot of toughness. Uh, super proud of. Norbs, man, going out there in very offensive conditions, five and a third. I mean, Evansville is really, really offensive. They're older um, and only giving up four earned runs, uh, striking out nine. I mean, I thought that was the key to the game. Obviously, McChrystal had a great day in our offense, just kept pouring it on, which we needed to. And, you know, that seven-run ninth was huge. Uh, so, super proud of our guys. And, hey, I need everybody in Greenville to take off work tomorrow. I'll pay something. I don't care, your boss. Uh, but. Um, we need every seat to be filled, and it's not our choice to play at noon, but, hey, this doesn't happen every day. Um, there's a lot of places in the country that would love to have a noon regional championship game, and it's a national holiday, so please take off work tomorrow, and let's have this place rocking tomorrow. Um, well, you know, it's just it's just an honor to be able to play in the postseason, and every every extra game you get, you want to take advantage of. So, just just getting to play baseball at this time of year when a lot of teams aren't is just a blessing, and just trying to go out there and do your best every day. I felt great. Uh, our training staff did a great job, getting me ready to go, and I just went out there and did my thing. Ethan, to go from people calling you Connor from the beginning of the season to chanting your name, the entire Clark 
Clark Stadium, and what was that moment like for you? It was special. Just um, what uh, the f the fans have done for me and my family, just incredible. And they've made uh, this part of my life in just amazing. What went into your just kind of preparation throughout the year just to get to the spot where you're a you know, crucial member in this, this lineup here? Uh, you know, just just trying to be consistent every day. You know, I had a lot of experience from last year, so ju just trying to do the little things right each day in practice, and, and eventually uh, things will things will go your way. So. Ethan, I mean, they obviously had some success in long balls. You just kept throwing strikes even after those moments. How key was it a lot like getting out like that to kind of get through? Um, I mean, they're a great team. I knew I had to keep going after them to just keep got battling. Uh, just trying to eat up innings as much as I can so I can save some guys. Um, but like I said, they're just a great team, just trying to keep going after them. And Ethan, with how fast you work, I mean, you get the ball and throw it, does that just kind of help just flush whatever happened and just, you just keep throwing? Um, sometimes, but most of the time I like to, J-Dub really does a good job at just controlling me, just like telling me to slow down a little bit whenever things just start throwing balls and stuff. But uh, just the pace just helps me just keep in rhythm. Take two more for student athletes. Uh, a lot, you know, it, it rattles pitchers. Um, guys come in here and they're they're not as comfortable. You get better pitches to hit, and it, it just allows us to to be the team we are. Luke, can you touch on some of those guy to guy things too? The last couple of days, you've been able to this guy hits and then that guy hits and then down the lineup. And what is kind of it like for you guys when that gets going? Hitting's contagious. Uh, you know, we stick to the plan and. Obviously, like yesterday, we face uh, an elite arm in Burns, and uh, we put a lot of good abs together. Didn't didn't get much early, and then and then boom, we score four, gives us uh, some momentum, and just carrying that momentum into the day. And just when everyone's sticking to it, one through nine, like we're gonna have a good shot every single game. So, Luke and Ethan, thank you. We'll let you guys do it some more. Any other questions? Thank you. Good job, Y'all can go. Y'all can do this. Yeah. Guys. See you guys. But between games, you, know, you talked about needing the offense to just kind of show up, and you guys score in eight different innings, 19 hits. I mean, does that kind of answer the bell for you? Yeah, I mean, look, we're going to have to do that again tomorrow. Well, obviously, our pitching's thin, um, especially when the wind's blowing out like it was tonight. Um, you know, no lead safe. Uh, didn't really feel good about it until the bottom of the ninth when we were up 13. So, um, super proud of uh, all of our guys that went out there today, but especially Jaden Winter, you know, settled in and uh, was really good for two innings. Coach, before the ninth inning today, you guys have not scored more than two runs in any all day despite having 22 runs. Uh, what do you think was going for the guys at the plate to stay that consistent? I don't even know if you had a one, two, three inning all day. Um, I just thought the guys were really focused. Uh, you know, we talked about it yesterday after um, facing Burns and how we stuck to an approach and one through nine, and we just made it hard on Burns. Um, I, like I said, it's. Uh, an elite arm. The breaking ball is, it looks like a fastball, and it's not a fastball, it's breaking like a foot. So um, once our guys like got back into that, I thought we have missed that for a couple weeks, uh, even at the conference tournament. So um, they've had a very focused intent um, with their approach, and we're going to need to do that again tomorrow. How do you balance as coaches trying to prepare for tomorrow and also dealing with rest and with the short turnaround? Hey. I go, hey man, uh, workload management is thrown out the window. So we're not in the NBA. So it's, uh, hey, show up tomorrow if you've got four hours of sleep. As, as I told him today, I said, hey, man, like, you singers can be tired hey, next year. You, know, you can't be tired today. And, uh, I mean, so many guys are playing banged up. I mean, Riley Johnson barely can run. Um, I thought we were going to take him out of the game. And <laughs> it clutches on deck, and there comes Riley Johnson. He's like, I'm good. I'm like, well, you've been gone for like 15 minutes in the training room, so I didn't know you were good. Uh, but he's a warrior. Starling's a warrior. Joey Barini. I mean, all those guys may have been banged up all year, and they just keep playing. You've known Ethan for so many years. Uh, how, how have you kind of seen him grow from this high school kid to you know, coming out and pitching the way he did tonight and helping set you guys up? <sighs> Man, he's so much different than Connor. I hope Connor's going to listen to this. But uh, he's uh, – the, one of the maturest freshmen I've ever been associated with as far as academically 
in the weight room, taking care of his arm care stuff uh, at practice. Um, sorry, Connor, but Connor was not like that as a freshman. He uh, made Coach Calvin lose a lot of hair. So, um, But then he became a really good player, and he's a great player in pro ball, and I wish somebody would give him an opportunity in the big leagues. For, for Luke, who you know, maybe wasn't an everyday player throughout the year, but to step into this role, I mean, what, what has he done behind the scenes that allowed him to have this success? Luke's a worker, man. Um, and I, I grabbed him, like, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, and I said, hey, just because the season hasn't gone the way you have wanted it to, or any of us, you know, for him individually, I said, you got to keep working. Don't just cash the season in because you could be a big piece um, to what we need. And Coach Lartigue and Packard uh, have worked really hard with him just uh, with his approach. And so I just think last fall and early in the spring just got out of himself and – you know, he's trying to hit for more power, which is fine, but you, you want to still be able to use your speed tool and hit the ball on the ground and stuff. So, um, but he's put together some really, really competitive at bats over the past couple of days. Coach, 2019, similar story. You lost game one to Quinnipiac, came back, won it all. What, what do you remember from that regional that you can lean on for the key to your success that you might be relying on now? Well, it just takes a lot of toughness. I mean, it takes a lot of toughness from the coaching staff, uh, the players, the athletic training staff, uh, our strength coach, uh, the grounds crew, uh, the operations crew, the media. It's a, I mean, it's it's a grind on everybody. But uh, I'll have I'll have juice tomorrow because you know these opportunities don't uh, come around very often, and our our guys are going to have juice. So that's the the main thing. We need to be ready to go, and it'll be a battle and probably a high scoring game because uh, both teams are thin on the mound. 17 days ago, Colby Lawson never pitched in a college baseball game. What does this say about his maturity to come in, do this as a freshman, and be in as many high leverage situations as he's been in? Seawall is uh, uh, also a mature freshman. Like I mentioned this to a lot of people, but he's a throwback. Like he could have played back when I played for Coach LeClaire. From the standpoint, he just shows up and goes to work every day. Doesn't talk a whole lot. Um, yes, sir. Um, you tell him to work on something. Got it. Um, and he's super competitive. Uh, is he got the best stuff on the mound? Nope. But normally he throws strikes and he competes. And um, you got to beat him. And uh, you know he's been a good addition to our bullpen with you know Jake Hunter not being available, uh, Shinkman not being 100 percent, Root being hurt, um, all those things. So um, just proud of him. I got you. That's your favorite question, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, hey, I do not know who we're pitching tomorrow. Um, and Coach Knight doesn't either. So we're going to huddle up and figure it out. And it's going to be a lot of guys throwing tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. It is 10 of 6 on the East Coast. I'm sure both.